Hello and welcome back to A Splash of Paint, brought to you in association with the SAA Society for All Artists. Now it's time to put the finishing touches to today's Try Your Hand At watercolour project that we started earlier in the programme. So what we'll do next is start to bring some real dark shadows into this picture. This really is where it starts to come alive. Any pictures like that, watercolours, whatever it may be. Uh, I'm going to start off just by actually moving the board on one side and I'm going to turn it that way just because it makes the blending a little bit easier. I want to use a size 6 brush and some natural grey because it is a shadow colour. That's what I've designed this grey to be. Don't be afraid of the dark because it's what makes the picture work. And the first thing I want to do is come down this corner. In fact, it could be a little bit heavier than that. Natural grey is mixed from blue, red and yellow pigment, so it's a primary colour grey. And I want to work up to the point of the apex. This is the inside of it, by the way. I'm going to come up to the apex point and I'm going to go down all the way down that side, pretty much all the way to the bottom, and make it thicker just in that corner. Clean your brush, dab it on tissue a couple of times, and then blend it away. Now, blending is not easy. It's one of those little tricks that you need to practice. It sounds simple, just blend it away, but it's not always as simple as that. So it's something to practice. Best bit of advice is make sure that you don't have too much paint on the uh, paper before you do it. So don't have it really saturated, almost like a dry paint, if that makes sense. And that makes the job a little bit easier as well. And don't have your brush soaking wet when you blend the colours neither, because otherwise you'll end up blending all the way down there, so it goes too far. So just pulling that over. Now if I turn that the other way, you should start to see how it's looking almost though you can sort of nip inside that little alcove there. Let's lock that back off. And then we're going to use this same grey to add a few more shadows, not all that many, but just one or two more. Like this corner wants to be a bit darker. Again, the shadows are quite important. So that's quite dark there. Clean the brush, dab it on tissue once or twice. Don't dry it off completely. And then just make that grey disappear into the roof. And you can see how that makes a bit of a separation there. One of the most important shadows will be just underneath the uh, eaves of the little roof there. So that's quite a strong shadow coming down that corner of touch. So it's an L shape. There's lots of L shapes in buildings. Clean your brush, dab it on tissue, and then use the water again and make it blend. Try and keep your brush strokes in the same direction. And that should make that roof really hang, hang down there. Just going to drop in a bit of darkness at the bottom there as well. A little bit of a shadow around the edge of the foliage maybe, just a bit of a random line. Clean brush on the tissue, make it blend away. There we go, and we can see how that's making the foliage stand forward a bit more. I'm going to shoot to the other side, a bit more grey there. And I want to be darker, in fact I'm going to turn the board over again for this. Turn it that way. I want to go darker again, just down this corner. to make the foliage disappear, blend it away. So it's all about the shadows. So you can see behind there now, and you could even have a bit of a extra scratch if you wanted to. Okay, I'm gonna put some detail to the windows next, and for this I wanna use some Viridian and a little bit of Oriolin, which is the bright yellow and a bit of grey to make a dark cottage green. You quite often see cottages with dark window frames. I'm going to use this with the size 6 brush. And there's a bit of a detailed edge that goes around the uh, window there. You might prefer to use a rigger brush for this. Just take it all the way around the, uh, the frame. It's got like a wooden frame and then a white frame on the inner. There's a little window just creeping in there as well. So if you do a double line, it will help to give a bit of detail. We've got these little um, 
sort of wooden roofing uh, thingies. I don't know what they're called. I'm sure somebody will tell us. Just adding that little bit of uh, detail under there. Keeps the roof up. There we go. And then adding a bit of grey to the same colour or painting the darker side. To those. So you can see those under there. Starts to take you inside. Bit of a shadow, pale grey shadow for the actual recess of the uh, doorway. There's a door down there. So bringing that down. And at the same time as doing that one, I want to pop a shadow down there, leaving a thin edge on the outside. Maybe get a bit of dark down that corner as well. Clean brush, dab it on tissue, and then just soften those lines away. Remember the brush is not soaking at this point. There we go. And I'll paint the doorway in a little bit later on. So we can, we can see inside this thing now. Let's add a few extra bits to the windows. Let's use natural grey and paint in the actual dark windows. Because look at the windows and you don't see much detail at this distance. So what we do is we're painting a few little L shapes across the left and the top. I'm still using the size six because the size six for me is a bit of a worker brush. It's the one I use all the time. And I'm just gonna add these on all areas. Now, I'm not concerned about the paint drying because natural gray is not a permanent color as such, which means it's quite easy to blend it away. I'll do the same on the small window as well and then I'll blend all the colors in. So it's the L shapes exactly the same there's just a little bit showing on that window there and then clean brush single dab on tissue so we've got a nice damp brush there sometimes good to check and then just use that little bit of water what's on there to start to soften away the windows it does help if you do it in a diagonal because the diagonals will actually give you a bit of reflection, so if you scribble your brush in a diagonal fashion when you blend these away, and you can see I'm darting from one to the other, I've sort of got like jitter mode on the brush at this point and just jumping around. And every time I go to one, it's softening it away. So you can see there how the window now looks like it's an actual window. Same for the little window there. Damp brush, give it a bit of a scribble bit of a soften. And then just get a touch more grey. I'm just going to add one or two little diagonal brush strokes. Again, that helps to give reflection. You can see how loose I'm doing those. I'm not being precise at all with them. You don't need to be. It's not that kind of painting. There's a bit of a windowsill there. I'm going to put a shadow underneath it. Blend it away. There we go. And then add in little bits of uh, detail to the corners of the windows there. It's these bits that really start to pull it out. There we go. I'm going to paint in the uh, doorway, which is grey, with a little bit of burnt sienna, so a bit of a brownie colour. And that goes in down there. Don't need too much detail because you can't see it's very dark in there, so it doesn't really want much. But of course it wants a bit of a uh, doorway coming in. So I've done, say, half of it. Clean brush, dab it on tissue, and then just basically go down and blend it away. And you can sort of now see there's a bit of a wooden door. I've got a bit more pale grey. 
kind of wants a bit of a shadow coming down there. All these little bits make a difference. These are the bits that really pull it together. Just gonna get a bit of darkness in these areas. Clean brush, dab on tissue again, and then just work it in, almost a bit of a shadow there. There we go. Got a bit of green left from the previous session that was aureoling with a bit of blue. I can use this to put a bit of a grassy banking over there. Clean brush on the tissue more blending and just fade it away because we're talking vignettes, which is soft edges. Got a bit of dark there just to, that's the brown from the door actually, just to give it a bit of a smudge on the edges. Bit of dry brush, so that's using the texture of the paper at that point. There's very little paint on the brush. And I just want to finish this picture off by adding one or two flowers, some nice little roses or something growing around the garden there. But I'm just adding little bits of uh, detail to it, to this old slate porch. So I'm just using dry brush with grey. And just the odd little bit of dry brush around the walls, just to help it look as though it's, it's all part of one thing. Let's put a few flowers on. And for this, simply add a bit of water where you think you want to put them. So dampen a few areas. And then use some rose madder, which is a lovely colour. And the natural pigment is just like a rose, so it's ideal for this. And you can see what a difference that makes. Now, the great thing is that the reds and pinks do complement greens very well, and that's because it's one of the opposite colours on the colour wheel, so it really makes a difference. It really looks like it's kind of neutralising the actual um, green, which is quite nice because it just stops all that green looking too obvious. Putting a few little spots of pink flowers around there. Some of the areas are dry that I'm working on. Some of them are wet. Doesn't matter that much necessarily. But it really brings it alive, this. I'm just gonna get a rigger brush and if I've got some of the brown, what I did the, the uh, door with, which is burnt sienna and gray. I'm just gonna add a few little uh, twigs and things to this, a few stems. Best bit of advice is just do it quite freely and then use your finger at the top and the bottom to bed them in. It all goes towards the detail of the picture, the end result there. And I think we can sit back and say that's a nice finished little watercolour there. I hope that's inspired you to have a go at creating your own watercolour works of art. And remember, we're always keen to know how you got on and see examples of your work. Why not share them on the community section of the SAA website? Visit saa.co.uk for details. So as I pack away today's palette and paints, it's time for our final break, which joins in part four, when SAA professional artist Malcolm Cudmore conjures up a new project to help make your drawings more realistic, and I'll be helping you solve a few more of your artistic dilemmas. I'll see you soon. <laughs>